We love seeing these old, decrepit, fallen down houses. I love the idea that we can do it. I think that's part of the fun. And, and that's the passion that really drives this. I feel like I was your first fixer upper. <laughs> My diamond in the rough right here. Never miss an episode of Fixer Upper. The first thing I always think about when I'm designing a room is where am I gonna put the rug? And then I build the room from there. The thing that's most important to me is the style. I think about the people that are gonna own it. I think about their story, their style. The idea that I get to help them is a huge honor for me. I love this line in my home. I really feel like the quality is exactly what I You know, exactly I didn't realize I that I was gonna evolve into such a homebody. But I mean, you know, as a kid, I was a bit of a wild, uh, a wild horse. You know, I, I was hard to rein in. Uh, I never wanted to be in the same place twice, which is really why I gravitated towards real estate. There's never a dull moment in the real estate market. But um, as it relates to home, I really didn't find that piece of my uh, spirit, if you will, until Joe and I met and obviously started a home of our own. And, and now when I think about the kids and the farm and the animals, I mean, it's like there's no place on earth that I'd rather be, which is why real estate is so important to us. What I love about it is it started off as a job for us. And then as we started meeting these families and then we'd hand them the keys and see, oh, this is, this is life changing for these people. This is now gonna be part of their story, this home, the memories they make there. And so once we started getting into that, it really became something we became passionate about. And we truly believe that home is the most important place on earth. You know, we're in the business of home. That's what we've done for almost 15 years, whether it be flipping houses for people to buy them to create home for themselves or renovating or even just at the market. This whole business of home is something we take very personally. We don't take it lightly. Home is honestly the most important place on earth. When I think about where my family is, where my wife is, where those knuckle-headed dogs are, those you know, that's, that's home to me. Homes where the goats are. <laughs> I like the ring of that. <laughs> You know, I don't really care about the bits and pieces. I don't really need the four car garage. Home for me is wherever Joanna is just because that's where my heart's at. For the first maybe 10 years of our marriage, we'd been in so many different homes. So I've had to learn what home is. What used to be, oh, I've got to make my sofa and my chair, I, everything. When people walk in, I want them to feel this oh, she knows what she's doing from a design standpoint. I mean, in the beginning, that was really my mindset, hoping that there would be some type of stamp of approval. It felt fleeting, and it felt like every week I was onto something else, but never fully satisfied, where now I'm like, home is just being there. A place where when Chip walks in the door, that there's a place that we've carved out just for dad. And then for the kids, whether it be dinner, being in the garden, um, just being together, that's home to us now. I remember when I first started the blog, I had this little tagline, it was the Magnolia Mom. Home, it's your space, own it. So now I think it's more about home, it's your story, tell it. It's no longer about the idea of perfect spaces, mm. um, expectations and rules, it's your story, and we wanna know your story. When I first started realizing that Joe had a real gift, it was really early on in her shop over on Bosky. So we had this little tiny building and Joe started filling this little shop with all the Nick -nicks. home decor items. Yeah. And when I saw those, those uh, customers really start making those connections with Joe, I realized that she had a real gift for this. We started out thinking that this show was about construction, and it's actually turned into a lot more than that. It's turned out to be a show about love, a show about family, a show about your home. Before all of this happened, we had to look each other in the eye and say, who are we and who are we going to be when this is all over? For us, it was we want to love each other, we want to love well, our four babies are our biggest priority, and we want to do good work that matters. In the end, we want to look back and say, we did it. We stay true to those three things. I'd say the number one question we get asked is, can you and Chip come help us with our home? 
And it's funny, first season, I looked into uh, like hundreds oh, of requests. He, we would get all these emails and he'd print them out and say, team, how can we go to Fort Lauderdale? And I'm like, Chip, come on, you know we're we can't go. We're not going go. to New Zealand. But Chip's heart was really, I want to help people. They uh -huh. need help, I want to go and help them. We went to Mejia once. <laughs> we went to Mejia, which is 28 miles but they, from Waco. And that but everybody hard. calls it Mexia, so that felt like it was kind of like going to another country. We've got four kids. Um, we can't go to New Zealand. No, but. But I think that's what really inspired us with other things. We can't create a company in Waco, Texas that services everybody's renovation around the world, but we can create products that they can take and implement their renovations all over the world. I've tried to be really strategic with these collections that because I really want these to be a way of saying, here, you can do this. With the furniture, the rugs, wallpaper, paint, whatever it may be, these are tools that hopefully encourage you and inspire you to take that next step. Um, but you know, early on for us, one of my biggest mistakes I'd make almost on every job was paint. And that would be the most costly mistake. I remember one time um, I painted our house. I really thought it was gonna be a light tan. Buttercream, you called it. Buttercream was the goal. Um, but I looked at the swatch and I remember holding it out there going, I've got this. Butter and cream. then I call the painter. Execute the buttercream. Execute the buttercream. We're and going then, on vacation. We're going on a three day vacation. I remember this. We get home three days later and you have neighbors standing outside. You have school people driving yellow. by going like this to it's us. Actually on the on the paint ship it said school no, it bus didn't. yellow. It did not. She thought that said buttercream. It was like highlighter yellow. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting there crying. It cost $11,000 to paint that entire exterior. So for me, I don't want people feeling like that. So that was really the heart behind the paint line. I want people to see this palette and know that someone that has painted over 250 homes may have an eye for what should and shouldn't be the color. Like if you want a green, I'm gonna give you three greens. I'm not giving you 100 greens. Mm -hmm. So that when you leave, you feel like I can do this. With all the collections, I didn't want to just narrow in on one specific style. I really wanted it to speak to a lot of people so that they didn't feel confined to one specific look. You can really look at it and go, I'm modern, I'm really drawn to this. Mm -hmm. I'm eclectic, I really like this. I really wanted it to be a space where people felt like they could have fun in creating their own unique story for their home. You know, what I really love is when people start showing me pictures of their living room and saying, Joe, look what I did. Sure. And that's the biggest reward in all this is that people are kind of picking up and saying, I can do this too. We've started this new tradition over the past couple years where Valentine's is really a family affair. And so all the kids get dressed in their finest. The girls in their pretty little dresses, the boys in these little suits, Chip and I get really dressed up and we cook a big meal. Happy Valentine's Day from HGTV. Hey babe, do you believe in... Sorry, did I look fat in that one? Okay, got it, a little fat. Okay, take three. Ah, 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 ah. I mean, is this still a move? Every time I get to rocking, she says I look more like Garth from Wayne's World. Okay, Chris Farley, you look like Nick Nolte. I like Nick Nolte. Bangs feel cool. I think they look really dorky, but I feel awesome about them. From this perspective, looking out to the world, I'm like, I bet that's fun to look at. <laughs> The Downs home is over 100 years old, so I wanted to create a very classic design that didn't take away from the original character, but also blend that with some modern touches. Over here in the dining room, this is the grand room to me. I mean, we have this really large chandelier. I like to do light fixtures that make a statement, and I really feel like this light fixture is bold, pairs well with this beautiful table that Clint made. But another thing we did is just play off all the natural light that comes in. We added a really cool window seat um, to just make function more in the space. They wanted more seating in here, so that was just a natural way to add it. Now onto the kitchen. They like the idea of blue cabinets, um, so we did lower cabinets that are blue. There's still a really classic way about this kitchen. We have the subway tile that they wanted, the really beautiful Carrera marble. 
and then he got his stainless farm sink, which is something that he really wanted. I think this kitchen is fun because there's a lot of mix and match going on. You've got a, a mix of metals, you've got some brass, you've got some stainless. We also did a really fun play on color, so I feel like when you see this kitchen, it's just packed with character. A fun design element that we incorporated in this modern project were these really simple boxes. What I feel like makes this modern is it's very clean line, it's simple, it's pretty raw, and what I like about it is just the balance of it with the plaster behind it. You can really incorporate this look anywhere, whether it be the living room in this space, for instance, or a kid's bedroom, a playroom. You can think through this on a lot of different levels, even a mudroom, great for storage, but it also can highlight any of your favorite art pieces, your favorite books, so it really can go a long way. What's great about it for any space that you've got, whether you're modern, traditional, or rustic, you can change the idea of these boxes. Keep the concept the same, but change it whether you use reclaimed wood, slatted wood. What's great about this entire concept is you don't have to spend $1,500 on a piece of furniture. This all costs about $150, and it's unique. And as time goes on, you can add to it, take away, modify it. But I think it's interesting enough to really set the space apart. Can you believe it? Do you guys know where we are? The silos. The silos. Did you guys hear that mommy and daddy finally bought this place? This is the largest fixer upper we've ever considered by 10. Well, mommy and daddy, we want to try to keep these and figure out how to make this part of downtown. We are super excited about getting started on the silos. Ultimately, that's going to turn into our design offices and some retail space. We're doing some foundation work, framing out new windows. I've got painters priming all the exteriors. So it's moving along smoothly, but we've still got a long way to go. All right, here she blows. I don't think that the Cowboy Stadium required as much concrete as we've uh, poured over here at the Silo Project. Yeah, here we come. The silos are really coming together. Everything's just really starting to take shape, and I can't Exciting. wait to call that place my office. Every chance we get between other projects, we're over here working on the silos. So far, we fixed the foundation, established a new floor plan by adding those new windows and the doors, and we just installed that railing for the rooftop and the deck. Right there. The project is looking beautiful. We're so proud of this thing. I mean, everything Joe hoped for is starting to kind of materialize right before our eyes. Perfect. That's the first piece of furniture in here. It's kind of a big deal. And I mean, I'm like a kid in a candy store. This is like a 100-year-old piece. Isn't this awesome? Right there. Perfect. It's crazy to think that here in a month or so, there's going to be customers in here. There's going to be product. It's going to be buzzing. Right over here, guys. Right there. Awesome. I feel like I'm in a dream right now, and I'm pinching myself. This is the biggest fixer-upper of our career. Are you guys ready to check it out? All right, let's go.